In this video, I'm going to talk about what is meant by ischemia reperfusion. So, <coughs> ischemia reperfusion. So let me just sort of break it up. So ischemia means lack of blood flow to a specific cell or organ. Okay, lack of blood flow. Lack of blood flow to a specific cell or organ. Reperfusion is recovery of that cell or organ, a specific cell, from not receiving a blood and instead receiving the blood, right? Or receiving the blood, i.e. recovery, okay? So what does that mean? So imagine this is a, like a hot cell. Imagine this is, sorry, so this is a hot cell. So it'd be hot cell, okay? So this is a hot cell. In a normal scenario, you would use oxygen. There is plenty of oxygen around, the blood circulation comes in and, and transmits the oxygen to the cell. Cell will undergo respiration. Would you aerobic respiration using that oxygen and glucose is present after going through glycolysis pathway, which I'm, I hope you guys already know that the end product would be pyruvate. And using that oxygen present, it would go to the TCA cycle. And after going to the TCA cycle, it would convert from many electron carriers such as NADH. And those NADHs would go to the electron transport chain. So we have this electron E, T, C. So NADH from the TCA cycle, C6 TCA cycle that use the pyruvate from the glycosis pathway. Okay, I'm not gonna go too much detail on that, but I hope there, there are plenty of videos that goes to the detailed cycles, but I just want you to know that we use the TCA cycle from the end product of the glycolysis, which is pyruvate, would go, and pyruvate would form, go to the TCA cycle from the plenty of these NADHs, okay, or FADH, electron carriers. Electron carriers would go to the electron transport chain and eventually, would form us the ATP, okay? It's like a very, very basic view. You're using ATP synthase, for example. Would form us ATP we need, okay? And now we have a lot of plenty of ATP. It can use that to run the many cellular machinery and etc. okay? So this is aerobic respiration, right? So it is aerobic, aerobic respiration. Now, you know, Sometimes my, for example, arteriosclerosis would happen. You know that that's plug form in your heart that doesn't receive any oxygen. That doesn't the, the blood cannot go through the that specific vein artery that is blocked by a plug. Okay, so that as a result, there's a cell. Okay, so now this is I'm gonna get rid of this and imagine this is a cell undergoing the plug, right? So it doesn't receive any blood oxygen. So there is not blood going up and hence there is no oxygen. So if there is no oxygen, what would happen? We no longer can undergo TCA cycle. So as a result, the pyruvate that is formed, um, so we have this glucose pyruvate, and this would form lactic acid. This will form us lactic acid instead of going to the acetyl-CoA and TCA cycle, as I just mentioned. It will go to the T. It will do fermentation. This is fermentation, right? Form us the lactic acid. Now, we have this lactic acid real meal up. This means after each lactic acid is acid, this will reduce. Okay, this will reduce the. Um, the acidity, this will reduce the alkaline concentration of the cell. It will make it more acid than it's supposed to be. So this means the cell wants to activate the pathway as a sodium, okay? We'll activate this sodium hydrogen exchange up, okay? This would ensure, all right, this would ensure this channel would ensure that the acidity that results from the lactic acid, right, because it produced, makes it more acidic, 
it would pump out this hydrogen ion inside the cell, okay? And instead bring in the sodium inside. Okay? And this results in not only trying to regulate the pH level, but it builds up many, many sodium. Okay? Because we're getting in so much sodium Z. And note that we're not gonna form from this fermentation product. You're not gonna form any ATP, and this glycosis doesn't yield really, doesn't yield ATP. So the rate of the usage of the ATP is going down, okay? We're not having too much ATP to being used, which is not good. So, come back to this step. We have too much sodium being built up, right? We have too much now sodium being built up all around the cell. Okay, and we don't know we we do not want that. And we are increasing the concentration of sodium in so much extent. We only talk because recall in the heart cells you have a calcium involved as well. Alright, so we have a calcium involved as well. Calcium. We have plenty of calcium here and there, and so this is calcium. But the concentration of sodium is much, much higher than calcium than it's supposed to be. Because you do not want that, in a regular fashion, you do not want that to happen a lot of sodium. So you want to get rid of this amount of sodium. So what do you do? Cell has another um, channel known as um, the cal sodium per calcium exchanger, right? It's the antiporter, using one of them. In regular fashion, in a regular case, for cell to be getting out that it uses, uh, in a regular fashion, is that it uses the calcium, it imports, it imports um, calcium out and bring sodium in. This is a this is a healthy way of doing it because all right, so we have a higher concentration of sodium outside than inside, so we have a more concentration of sodium coming inside itself. But in this case, because of this high amount of sodium building up inside the cell, this would be reverse. All right, so instead of sodium going inside, um, we're gonna have sodium going outside and calcium coming inside, right? Calcium, too much of calcium. Now, this is a hard cell. Recall, this is a hard cell. You don't want that too much of calcium because oftentimes the high amount of calcium, calcium can result in arrhythmia. Arrhythmia. Arrhythmia results from high concentration of calcium, abnormal concentration, concentration of calcium. This impacts on heart, con heart contraction. You know, arrhythmia is regular, irregular, abnormal heart contraction, heart rate. This is not good, remember. We want to have a steady, maintained, average heart rates contracting. So you want to have that good amount of blood be pumped in order to be pumped all around your body. You don't want, you don't, you do not want to put like, you put the heart around your body not fully reached okay so this doesn't arrhythmia is not reaching the hundred percent contraction okay that's what it essentially means so this is the really dangerous now okay so this is a way really the ischemia we're not getting a lot of lack of blood flow and this results but say the plug is now removed all right the plug is now removed and the blood circulation comes and, you know, remove the lactic acid and all kind of etc. Even though, even though, because most of the time, the timing, even if it, often the things get worse, they would not get, they would not get better, they would often get worse. I mean, because even the blood would come in and try to get like oxygen in and you would think, okay, there is now, the guy undergoes ATP and etc. Because one thing I didn't mention here is that this high amount of calcium sodium, because we're not building up, not producing a sufficient amount of ATP, we're not going to have that. We're not going to have this sodium, potassium, right, and ATP. I think it's ATPase. 
that would pump sodium out. I think it's two Na plus out and would pump potassium in. Okay, so we're not gonna have that ATP being built up. So as a result, so as a result of that, we're gonna have this high amount of sodium inside and that results for the calcium to be reversed in the role. Even though the blood circulation comes in, or maybe the oxygen comes in, this still inside the intracellular concentration is so low in pH. Okay, so it's so low in pH that it still does this kind of job that wants to import out the so hydrogen to bring in the sodium. It has to do that to keep its pH level steady and maintained. So as a result of that, we're not getting that amount of ATP, even though you may think, okay, so we have a blood circulation, the process takes time. And the ref and the injury, okay, is a whole name. Injury results from this late delay, okay, delay of the speed, and the damage it causes while the ATP sufficient is build up and the potassium is coming in and sodium is importing out, okay. So that that this process to happen to go to the TCA cycle and electron transport chain to produce ATP that will be used by this channel to pump in the sodium and pump out the so pump in the potassium and pump out the sodium takes the time takes a lot of time and during this time we're still having the calciums coming in we're still going to have this arrhythmia we still have the irregular heart contraction which is very dangerous okay so that's in a way ischemia reperfusion even though blood is being received Lactic acid is being built up, so you know, so probably the lactic acid was using the antiporta or tr antiporta was here, for example. But it's still like blood circulation comes in, washes kind of stuff out. Intracellular pH is much lower than compared to outside, it's still, even though blood comes in. So pH comes out, you have to pump, in, pump out the hydrogen ion, bringing the sodium ions and too much sodium ions, we start not building, a, forming a lot of ATP, so this deformed channel, we, not, we, we cannot use this channel we cannot, because we don't have a sufficient amount of ATP, and it means a lot of sodium will build up and reverse the role of this sodium ca calcium exchanger. We export, instead of importing in the sodium, we're exporting out the sodium, and instead of exporting out the calcium, we're importing in this cal calcium. Okay, which is not good, at least for it, yeah, hope it was helpful.